Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. Video number one, we do have enough to give you guys video number one, like I said Sunday normally things do die down but things are definitely going to be kicking off later and I don't want to drag it for too long later on so we're going to split them and this is video number one, make sure you are here for number two later on tonight and um, that's going to be an interesting one but let's get cracking with, we got a Brazilian that it looks like we're about to beat Real Madrid 4. And who is it? We referenced him yesterday. We're going to get into the detail. Fabrizio Romano has come out and explained everything. And Chelsea look like they've got on their man. I'll take that back. They've got on their boy. <laughs> Check this out. Chelsea have prepared Pedro Lima deal with Strasbourg. Brazilian right back expected to join the French club from Sport Recife. Agreement on personal terms. Working on final details between clubs to be sealed in the next days. Strasbourg move with a view to a Chelsea future. And that is something that I'm actually quite relieved to hear. Because yesterday I was mentioning about what about the possibility of down the line, you know, what if he comes in, we get a bid for Reese James, he goes or whatnot. It's a possibility. But it's nice to know that we are looking to bring in someone of this profile, not to walk into the Chelsea team immediately, but to send over to Strasbourg. Cool. For that, I'm absolutely happy with. I'm absolutely happy. Not a problem. In the similar fashion of how we used Andre Santos. Now, Santos is going to be an interesting one. Is Santos going to be someone that Chelsea do actually utilise? Or is he going to be someone to make money down the line? I actually don't know. Let me know your thoughts because there is a talented midfielder there. But is he going to be used? Is he not? I guess time will tell and we will see. Will he be part of the first team squad in the coming season? We don't know. We'll wait and see. Especially if Gallagher were to bounce, I would presume maybe there's a spot there for someone like Santos. But we'll find out. For Pedro Lima though, heading over to Strasbourg, going to beat Real Madrid apparently were interested in this boy. Chelsea have got everything sorted out. Now, for Pedro Lima, comes from the second division of Brazil, is a Brazil under-17 international, has played in all Brazilian competition except for the first division because, like I said, he was a second division player. But he's highly rated. As a talent, he's highly rated. And like I said yesterday, it's the scouts that are doing their jobs here to try and pluck out the talent. And as long as this is going to be the case, I'm happy with plucking out this sort of talent. Send him to Strasbourg, let him prove himself there. Let's see how he develops over there. And then all of a sudden, we can take it from there. Not a problem. This is a good deal. So... Coming on um, a deal straight to Strasbourg, let me know your thoughts. We still don't know in terms of the fee, but I'm happy with this one. Now, another Brazilian that we've actually gone and sorted, right? Coming to Chelsea, but we've not heard much from. Well, Fabrizio has given us the update. Here's the latest on Estevão William. William Estevão is still joining Chelsea despite delays in signing documents due to Palmeiras busy with Galherme transfer. So don't worry, no need to be stressed, rest assured, everything is okay. Just like Estevão William, just like Kendry Pires. He's another one we've forgotten about who's coming to Chelsea in 2025. This is going to be an interesting dynamic. To tie we have to go through next season... I think to really understand what's going to happen. When we talk about Kendry Pires, for example, when we talk about Estevão William, when we talk about these guys, um, this is where we have to talk about Michael Elise. Because if we're going to bring in Elise, who is a right winger, what's the plan for Kendry Pires? What's the plan for Estevão William? Have to, have to mention that I will take Elise tomorrow. And out of all of them, he is the most proven. Estevão William, for me, there's loads of developing to do, right? Uh, someone that doesn't need to come into the Chelsea team immediately. Let him develop. But Kendry Pires, that's someone that is showing signs already of competing at the, at the highest level, at senior level. So what do we do? This is where we have to talk about what players are we playing? What formation are we playing? Is everyone going to fit? Are we going to be able to fit Elise, Kendry Pires, Cole Palmer... And Enzo, Caicedo, all at the same time? Or are we going to have to try and shift someone onto the left wing, perhaps? Can Kendry Pia shift over to the left, maybe? Does that mean Sterling and Mudrik are now probably not going to play? I think most people will be okay with that. But you get the gist. 
we need to figure out exactly how we're going to move forward. What are we going to do? So this is going to be an interesting dynamic in terms of how we're going to figure out this Chelsea team. I genuinely don't know what direction we're going in. It's very uncertain. What do you think we should do? How do you think we should set up? Bearing in, the minds that, bearing in mind the names that I've just mentioned as well. And then we, obviously even later on, Esteval William, we've got to think about if he is good enough, how does he fit in? Who's he getting sacrificed? It's an interesting dynamic, this. An interesting dynamic. Um, so let's wait and see what happens. Let me know your thoughts. Now, a Chelsea target that is being targeted elsewhere, we have an update on. Here's the latest on Sesco. Purple panel saying Arsenal await Benjamin Sesco's decision on activating his release clause. This is a weird one. Um, clearly, they're in touch with the player. But clearly, he's uncertain. Because if not, they would have just triggered the release clause. If, if there's no release clause being triggered, that probably means that they're not sure Sesco is actually up for moving, which indicates his willingness to maybe stay at Leipzig, which I've got to be honest, I've done the Ancelotti eyebrow there, or maybe the people's eyebrow, <laughs> if you smell. Uh, but uh, would he really not want to leave from Leipzig to come to the Premier League? you got Chelsea after you, you got Arsenal after you. Chelsea, we, we know there's a link. Arsenal are actually looking like they're proper interested. This is where I was, I was honestly thinking, going, you know what? I would take Alvarez all day long in that instance. All day long. Because you pick him or Sesco. Personally, I'm taking Alvarez. But Arsenal, who we first heard are interested in Osimhen, now is, we know it's going to be a lot of money, are interested in Sesco. But what's going on here? Does Sesco maybe not want to move? We'll see. This is the latest update in relation to this whole saga. We don't actually know. But Purple Panel have said that Arsenal are waiting. So it's up to the player. If the player gives the green light, then boom. All of a sudden, release clause will be triggered because then they don't need to talk with Leipzig. They can talk straight to the player in terms of the, the technicals, the deal. Get the deal done now. Let's get the, 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 the details on the paper. But we need to first know, are you willing to move in the first place? If not, there's no point. So this makes sense. Let's wait and see what happens. What do you think down below? Much appreciated in relation to Sesco. And let's wrap up with a little bit of news coming about and a manager that I thought had given up. Well... We don't know if he's given up or if he's not given up. Technically, it looks like he's given up. He's maybe enjoying all the money he picked up from Chelsea Football Club. The compensation that we gave him, he's sorted for life. But a club have moved for him, it seems. Here's the latest on Graham Potter. Leicester City have made contact with Graham Potter over their managerial vacancy. This would be a good move for him, I can't lie. It would be a good move. Um, Chelsea have just given Leicester £10 million for Maresca and his staff. The compensation's been given. So, you know, you got the first year of Graham Potter's contract covered, if you want. <laughs> we were paying him 12 million a year. So, you know, Leicester, you're probably going to have to pay somewhere close to that if you're going get, to get him interested. But I don't think Graham Potter's one are going to go to Leicester. You know what? Someone mentioned this. Actually, not someone. A few of you mentioned this in the comments the last time I spoke about Graham Potter. And I have to be honest, I agree with all of you that mentioned this. It... It flicked on a light bulb in my head and I went, wow, they got a point. They're onto something. And I didn't think of it. I've thought about it before, but since then, I've not really paid attention to it because I'm not really sure if this is even a good idea. But I think this is what Graham Potter wants and it explains why he's not been interested in any job so far. A few of you said, and I agree, he's waiting for the England job. And it makes sense. It makes complete sense. Make complete sense. Why would you not be willing to move to all of these opportunities that have, that have, that have shown up since he left Chelsea? He's, con he's constantly turned them down. Or he's not interested. Or, but there is one job that is coming and we know it's coming. Southgate is going to take England to the Euros. <sighs> Can't wait for that. Um, once that's done, which might be soon... <laughs> We might not be saying long in Germany at, at this rate. We'll see what happens. I mean, I hope we win it, but pff, I've spoken about that already. You can go and watch that England video I done two days ago. But Graham Potter might just be there going, it's fine, I'll wait for England. And you know what? If I have to pick between Southgate and Potter, 
I would pick Potter. I think Potter, I hope he would have learned from the mistakes that he made at Chelsea in terms of dealing with big players, big egos, big personalities, right? And not being so much of a nice guy. If he fixes that up, he's actually got the tactical prowess to get a team to play very well. And his way actually suits what England need to play like. Suits them. It's just, does he have the personality in store? It's nice to know that for England, he's not week in, week out. You know, it's one game every, what, three months, perhaps? So that might suit Graham Potter. And that might suit his dynamic. The way that he likes to work might suit just being around that sort of personality for a limited time. If you're in and around Graham Potter week in, week out, it's not going to work at a top club. This is why United were linked with him and I laughed. And I was like, yeah, go on, then. not a problem. I don't think he suits top-level, high-end club football. I think he, he, think he suits mid-level club football. But I think he also suits international football. And I think he would actually be better for England than Gareth Southgate by a mile. So I wouldn't be against this appointment. If, if England were to go for Graham Potter, I think it would make sense. Um, personally, I would love Thomas Tuchel to go and take the England job at this point. I think that would suit us to a T. I think that would be amazing, right? I think we'd win a competition with Thomas Tuchel, hands down. But, like I've said, Graham Potter, maybe he's waiting for the England job. Maybe a few of you are right. Let me know down below what you think. And I will see all of you later on for video number two. So, make sure that you are hitting the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you have enjoyed this. And check out the socials on screen and in the description. I'll see all of you later tonight for video number two as we get into the nitty gritty of what happens from now till then. So, I'll see all of you then. Have a good one, people. See you a lot later. Take care. And peace.